Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is you Sunday. You ought to give yourself a round of applause for being alive and well. Hallelujah. We're here another day, another day. You're not excited in here. Give yourselves a hand clap. Yes, it is you Sunday. I got my man Isaiah Jenkins representing the youth today. He'll be opening us up with prayer. But before we get into that, let's go ahead and like, tag, and share. Hallelujah. We want to let everybody know that we are here. We are here. Thank God. Come on, come on. I see you coming in. I see you coming in. I see you tagging. I see you sharing. God bless each and every one of you. It is Youth Sunday, so we are excited about Youth Sunday. So we're excited, excited what the Lord is going to do today and for our youth. So go ahead, not just tag and share uh, to any youth that you know needs to be blessed today. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do that. We are excited. I see you coming in. I see you coming in. Oh, we got our Bishop Jason Furlow from South Africa watching. We got uh, Alicia Hopper watching. We got Alethea Epps. Yes, yes. We got Yolando Short. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. We got Jarrell Jennings. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, I see you tagging. All right, Shay. Come on, you're doing all this tagging. You better go ahead and tag. Tag your it. Yes, that's a good youth game, right? Tag your it. Tag your it. Come on, come on. Tag them, tag them, tag them. Yes, we are excited to be alive. Are you excited, Zay? Come on. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> he is excited. He is excited. So we're about to start prayer. And I, like I said, I have Isaiah Jenkins here who will be opening up, opening up uh, in prayer uh, for our Youth Sunday. So, uh, yeah. So go ahead and keep tagging and sharing. And we're going to move forward so come on Zay, let them open it up let the Lord you God I want to thank you for this day I want to thank you for letting us have a chance to praise you again thank you for you Sunday Lord God I thank you for Minister April for guiding the youth to what they have to do today Lord God I even thank you for Thanksgiving Lord I thank you for the ones that didn't get a chance to spend Thanksgiving with their families I thank you for letting them get a chance to um Spend it next time, Lord God. Thank you for all the orphans and the homeless people that didn't get a chance to spend it. Thanksgiving with the families. I thank you for um, blessing their hearts, Lord God. I thank you for, for healing Auntie, taking her out the hospital, Lord God. I thank you for even touching all the elderly in the church, Lord God. I thank you for touching our hearts and minds and keeping us under your blood, Lord God. And in the name I pray, amen. Amen. Yes, I see you tagging and sharing. Yes, 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 yes. God, we thank you. Thank you for our brother Isaiah. Thank you for what you put on in his heart to pray about. We thank you for using him mightily. God, we thank you for what you're going to do in this service. We thank you for the lives that will be changed, the minds that will be renewed, the hearts that will be opened. Hallelujah. God, we thank you for those that will be drawn to you, drawn to you, drawn away from their de uh, their earthly desires, drawn away from their fleshly desires, but drawn drawn closer to you God drawn closer to you and if we be drawn closer to you we you will be lifted up and God so we want you to be lifted up today be lifted up today our precious king be lifted up by our youth be lifted up by the young adults the adults by everything everything that has breath will praise you everything that has breath will lift you up so God be lifted up today God we extol you we honor you we give you glory we give you honor come on if you can just take a few moments before we move forward and just give the God praise that woke you up this morning that started you on your way hallelujah uh, brother Isaiah pray for those who are not fortunate and wasn't fortunate to spend Thanksgiving like others who had great feasts hallelujah but you should be glad hallelujah that you have a testimony that's greater than anything that God has done something for you that he has uh, that he can, that no one else can do hallelujah that you can't do for yourself so God we give you glory 
we give you honor we give you praise we give you honor we give you glory and praise so god be glorified today be lifted up holy king be lifted up holy savior god we bless you and we honor you and we give your name all the praise that is truly due to you in your precious name amen be blessed and enjoy the rest of the service
Amen. Amen. This means war, and they call the name of Jesus. There's no greater name than the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As you can see, I have Ian Drakeford, correct? Ian Drakeford. Yeah, I want to make sure I got the last name right. Ian Drakeford, who's going to be reading the scripture for us this morning. So go ahead. Let's give him a round of applause in the chat here. In the Come on, y'all. Thank you. Let's give. He's about to read the scripture for us. Go ahead, Ian. Read the scripture for us. Psalm 107, Psalm 107, 1 through 9. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His, his love endures forever. Let, let the redeemed of the Lord say this. Those he redeemed from the land, from the hand of the foe. Those he gathered from the from the lands, from east and west, from north to south. Some mother in desert wastelands, find no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in trouble, and he delivered them from the distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for them, for men. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good, with, with good things. Psalm 107, 1 through 9. The Lord is my life. The Lord is my life. 
the Lord is my light. Bless you, everyone. We are so glad that you are able to join us for our Army Sunday. Amen. As you've seen on the screen, the lineup for this upcoming regroup. Amen. You, As you see, you do not want to miss. So if you have not, this week is, is a nice week for you to go ahead and register. Please register, register, register if you have not. If you have registered and haven't gotten a room yet, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to get one, but you can contact Sister Kim, amen, and you can see if uh, they, if any arrangements can be made for you to get a room, but you do not want to miss this event. It's going to be wonderful, amen. Uh, it's from December, 11th, December 8th through the 11th, amen, as you've seen, so please, if you have not registered, please be sure to do so. Amen. December 31st is our New Year's Eve watch night service at 10 p.m. with our guest pastor, Leslie Christie. You do not want to miss that event as well. So if you have nothing to do that night, please join us. Amen. It is going to be held uh, at the Buttonwood in... Delaware. So please, if you are not doing anything, um, you can come on out. Amen. Uh, January 1st at 2 p.m., our Army Strong will be hosting a paint vision party. A paint vision party. Uh, youth are $15 and uh, parents are $20. Uh, if you are interested, you can let us know. Amen. That's going to be a nice event for us to come on out uh, New Year's Day and to, you know, just a fellowship. Amen. Uh, January 16th through the 17th, 
is our New Year's outpour with our prophetess, Barbara Calloway. Amen. That is also going to be held at Buttonwood. Um, it's going to be on the 16th at 6 p.m. and the 17th at 7 p.m., another event that you do not want to miss. If you are interested in attending that, you may let us know as well. Uh, we want you all to enjoy the rest of the service. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Wherever you are, if you're in your car, your home, I just ask you to join with us in worship and give God glory because he's just been good. Because he deserves the glory and the honor, even in our situation. He is there and he still deserves it all. And we, we just give him glory. We just give him honor and we just thank him. So God, we just want to thank you, Jesus. We want to tell you that we love you. And that you deserve all the glory. Nobody but you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another Army Strong Sunday. Let's give it up for our youth. Let's thank God for them. They did a wonderful job this morning. We thank God for our praise and worship. We thank God for our young people. I enjoy seeing our young people serve. And I'm excited about that. I'm excited to be here. I always tell everybody, if you want to ask me what Sunday is my favorite Sunday, it's Youth Sunday. Why? Because they have so much energy. They have so much to present before the Lord. And one of the greatest things is the fact that they do it from the, the, the bottom of their heart. They do it from the pureness of their heart. So I thank God for our youth. Give an honor. We give honor to God, to our Bishop Jason Furlow. We thank God for him. We know some of us who are still traveling. And we thank God for those that have come and how God has blessed some of us to come over the airwaves, 15 hours over the waterways. We thank God for that, how God has kept us. God is a keeper. Yes, he is. And we know that God, he does all things well. So we're excited about that. We're excited about just the grace and the mercy of God. We give an honor to uh, to our Dr. Smith, to our overseer designate Smith. We thank God for him. We thank God for our mom uh, furlough and to uh, our overseer furlough. We thank God for them and to all of the leadership of ECC, to our minister April Amaker, who is the uh, director, the, the I guess, what do we call her? The leader over her, the Army Strong, and she's doing a wonderful job. And for all of the parents that are working along with them, it's not easy, especially in a day and age where there's so much that could cause distraction. There's so many things that could cause and, and, and cause our young people to be distracted. But we thank God that there are people who are around them, who are holding them, who are embracing them, who are teaching them, who are instructing them. That if they have this instruction now, and sometimes we forget about the scripture, if we train up a child in the way that they will go, when they're older, they will not depart from it. And I can say that I am uh, uh, I, I'm a, a status my status is I, I grew up in church all of my life. And so even through trials and tribulations and things that I've had to face, it has been the grace of God who has kept me through all of it. I've faced temptation. I have faced uh, different circumstances, play, even time when I was walking through depression, but it was the hand of the Lord that was on my life. It was the, the, the power of who he is on my life that allowed me to overcome it. It's also the power of God who has kept me. I can tell you I haven't always been in the right place at the right time. That's, that's, that's the truth be told. I haven't always done everything correct, but it was the hand of the Lord. It was the power of God that kept me. I've been in some places where shootings have happened. I've been in places where uh, uh, people have gotten arrested, and it could have been me. But because God and his love for me, he had never allows me to come out of his hand. The word of God says that uh, whatever we place in his hand, he watches over and he protects it. And so even as we go forth and I encourage the youth ministry as you're going forth, every time we pray, every time we sow, Every time, even for those that may not be a part of Army Strong, every time we sow, every time we lift up uh, our young people, we are placing them in the hand of God. We ourselves don't have the capacity to be able to fully care for our children because the reality is we can only see but a little bit. We may know where we came from, but we don't always know the full plan of God for their lives. So every time we sow, Every time we encourage them, we are placing them back in the hand of God and saying, God, I don't know what it is that you have for their life, but I give them to you. Even before they have the full awareness that they have to serve and they have to dedicate themselves to God, Father, I put their lives back in your hands. I dedicate them to you. Sometimes we think about christenings, and I'm going to go into our message because this is not the message. But when we begin every day, and I'm going to encourage parents, every day, let's have another moment. When you wake up in the morning, do another christening. Father, they're not mine. You loan them to me to teach them the ways of, the, uh, of life, to teach them how to go about their day. But God, I give them back to you. 
They don't belong to me. I give them back to you. I don't know the pattern that you have on their life. I don't know their Jeremiah 29, 11, but you do. And so I dedicate them back to you. I'm going to sow the seed. I'm going to pour into them. I'm going to keep them encouraged. But, Father, I don't know. As our bishop says, I don't know this space. The reality is I'm not a parent, but I know for a fact when Juanita and Charles did tell me all the time there was no parenting handbook, but God saw fit to teach them how to teach us so that we could be patterns not of Juanita and Charles, but it taught me how to follow after Christ. And so part of that is my message for today. And again, I gave honor to everyone, to all of our young people. I love you all very much. I am blessed to be able to stand before you, and I'm going to give that, that motto that everybody says, that uh, a slogan that all the preachers says, I'm not going to be before you long. I don't intend on being before you long. But I, no, I don't, no, you don't want me to take my time. Let's just be honest. You don't want me to take my time because there's a lot of notes here. Some of y'all don't see some of these, this book that I come up here with. There's a lot of notes in here. So I bypassed some of them so that I could get to what it is that the Lord wants to share. And so I'm going to be coming from uh, John, the 13th chapter. And it's amazing to me. I, I was listening to the, the, the topics from the last two Sunday from our Pastor Lawrence and also our Elder Vaughn. We thank God for them. The word was really rich. And I thank God because uh, for the last two Sundays, our Pastor Lawrence, he talked about don't miss the mark. And then our Elder Vaughn followed up with said, what are you looking at? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? You know, for some of us, uh, that's a, a, a something that we'll say when somebody's staring at us and we see them like, what you looking at? What, what, what's the problem? But for in this case, he was talking about what are we looking at? What is the mark that we are looking at? Because even as our pastor Lauren was saying, it's easy for us to miss the mark if we become distracted by what's going on around us. So and it's slightly different. It sounds like it's, it's slightly different for where the Lord is leading me this morning. But the Lord wanted me to let you all know that it's impossible for us to run a race if there's something wrong with our heart. There's no way for us to be able to complete a race if there's issues going on with our heart. Now, I'm going to use myself as an example. I was a big girl, okay? So I already know that there's some things because of the condition of my body there are some things that I know are already going on in my heart. You don't have to be my doctor. I have an appointment next week. But because of the condition of my heart, it doesn't give me the ability to be able to run sometimes without even a break. Sometimes at all. Sometimes when they used to tell me to run the mile, I end up, I'm the one that was always walking a mile. I'm the one that they were like, all right, she's like the last, last couple to, uh, to come around the track. That was me because of the condition of my body, but then it had an effect on the condition of my heart. So as I was uh, asking the Lord what he wanted me to bring to you all this morning, uh, he wanted me to refocus the heart back. Sometimes the Lord will come to us in different ways. Sometimes he'll come to us as king. He is the king. He also is the Lord. He also is the father, but sometimes he also shows up as the great physician. So the Lord began to tell me uh, and, and began to kind of focus in on the heart. One of the things that I've learned uh, just doing some brief study on the heart is that with if when we go to the doctors, one of the things that the doctor, they always check, they want to check the rhythm of our heart. They want to know how our heart is beating. They want to make sure that it's healthy, that those beats are coming through, they're strong, because any uh, uh, any dang interruption in the heart can affect the way that we're breathing. It can affect that life, the life flowing uh, fluid that we call blood to be able to full, fully circulate around the body if there's something wrong with the heart. 
Now, there's so many different levels to this because even as I was coming here, uh, the Lord began to say that if we don't have, if we never check the capacity of our heart, then we're going that we'll never be able to fully uh, receive the full capacity of who God is. When we look at it, we look at the winds and the air as uh, uh, the Holy Spirit. We'll never be able to have the full capacity of the Holy Spirit if there's something wrong with our hearts. So he began to uh, take me to John, the 13th chapter. And this is something I know a lot of times we're so used to, uh, especially now in the body of Christ. And while I can encourage our young people that a lot of times the focus is and even uh, I'm going to take go back to what our elder Vaughn was saying. Sometimes we can become offset with running the race that the Lord has prepared for us because we want the achievement of what someone else has. Sometimes we can become offset with what God wants us to do because we see the accolades that someone else is getting. We can become distracted because we see others being pat on the back and yet we're serving wholeheartedly and no one says thank you. Sometimes we can be become discouraged because we see others getting ahead and we're trying so hard. And yet sometimes we see we try to even uh, 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 make ways by trying to do things to get the attention of those that are above us. And it causes us to become distracted from what God has assigned for us to do. So he said, I want to bring you back to my heart. In the book of, um, and I'm going to get to uh, John chapter 3, but in the book of Luke, uh, the 22nd chapter, there was an argument that broke out. The disciples at the Passover, why I don't understand why they decided to at Passover have this argument. But they had an argument about, about who is the greatest of the disciples. Who here is the greatest one? And Jesus uh, as you journey on into chapter uh, 13 of John, we begin to see where he begins to uh, take off who he was. He already knew who he was. See, and that's something great that uh, as we go along and as our young people are instructed through the leaders and through the parents that they understand who they are. When you understand who you are, it eliminates the ability for us to compete for others' attention. So here we have the disciples, they have an argument because they want to know, well, who is the greatest? Who is the greatest? And as during this, so we know that Jesus being the teacher, being the physician, he begins to do something and do a demonstration that, of, that are very uh, uh, unlike what the disciples have seen before. While they're asking about my promotion, while they're asking about how high can I become, they begin to take their eyes off of the heart of Christ and begin to look at his hand. They began to transition themselves from looking at how to serve and how do I aim my attention on getting to the heart? How do I aim my attention on seeking the heart of God? And now I want promotion. Now I want promotion. So Jesus does something so wonderful. He begins to, in John chapter 13, beginning at the first verse, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. It says, now before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from the, this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the very end. And he sup and supper being ended, the devil having already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. I see, I'm gonna put a pause right there. When we're focused on our assignment, when we're focused on seeking the heart of God, I know we keep on hearing, oh, you haters, you haters. We don't even care about the haters. We don't even care about the haters. Why? Because our focus is at the heart of God. Because even in when I'm seeking the heart of God, I know how to love my enemies. Jesus, even though he knew that uh, 
uh, Judas was getting ready to betray him, he still sat down and blessed the same bread that Judas was getting ready to eat. Some of us, we already, we trying to set up and put razors in there in the bread. Well, I would have been one of the ones. They know that I, I was getting, you can ready to betray me? Oh, I'm going to set you up before you set me up. But see, here, knowing this, he was able to, he was not, uh, uh, his focus was not taken off of his assignment. But he knew that his disciples, if he didn't correct this, this uh, 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 bad behavior of the disciples, that there was going to, the ones that were going to follow him were going to fall into troublesome time. Why? Because they stopped focusing on reaching the heart of God. He began to say, he said, uh, he rose and knowing that, uh, his time had come, and he had come from God and was going to God. He rose up from supper and laid aside his garments. He took a towel and girded himself. And when he had poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel which he had girded himself. And I'm going to put a pause right there. He began to show them that I, I, I understand that I may be your master. He took on the off the robe of being a teacher. Now he uh, once again became acquainted with uh, 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 becoming a servant and never that he lost sight of becoming a servant. But he stooped down to be able to wash the disciples' feet. Can I tell you that? Uh, long ago, and the custom was for if anybody was coming into a house to have supper, one of the things that the servant was doing, because this is the lowliest of servants, the lowliest of servant would be the one that would sit at the door. They would be the ones that would get the water. And I know that a couple of Sundays ago, we washed each other's feet. But they would be the one, that servant would be the one that would sit at the door. Hallelujah. That would sit at the door. And they would be responsible for washing the feet of those that came in for dinner. Why was this important? Because no doubt the, those people that were coming for dinner, they had walked a long way. No doubt those people had stepped in grass and stepped in mud, and now here they are coming, getting ready to dine. Now, see, in the old days, the, the difference between the tables that we have today and the tables that we have right now, the tables sat a little bit lower. So when I pulled up to the table to eat, my feet were right there. So if I did not have my feet washed, when it came time for me to sit at the table, whatever I walked through in life is now sitting at the table. A lot of us, we, we fail to realize that we have a responsibility just as Jesus was the example to wash each other's feet. Why is this important? Because we go through things in life and we hear all the time we go through different traumas. But the reality is when we come to sit down to feast of the Lord, we can allow issues and things that we've gone through in life to show up at the table. Why? Because someone here, they, they, they need what's here. They don't want to be distracted by what's on your feet. They don't need to know or understand that you've been through different traumas. But when you show up to the table, we show up for ministry. We show up to be imparted into. We leave those things. And it's not that we've forgotten what, what we have gone through. But when we show up, we show up with the pureness of our heart. We show up with the pureness in our bodies that we, that those that are supping with us aren't distracted by what's on our feet. Psalmist said, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tent with the wicked. 
What was the job of the doorkeeper? Even in the house of the Lord, they had the responsibility to make sure that whatever people journeyed through in life, whether they stepped in cow manure, whether they stepped in grass, whether they stepped in dirt, that no matter what they stepped in, that when they came into the house of the Lord, there was no evidence of it. And why? Why would you say, Alicia, we can't bring our hurts? It's okay. We want you to bring your hurts to the house of the Lord. But here's the reality, and here's the evangelist uh, 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 point that I sometimes I, I, I bring out, and sometimes this is the hardest part, but so, it, we can't allow what our traumas were to interrupt the flow of the Holy Spirit. I know, I know y'all don't like that, and that's fine. I drove myself today. But the reality is, I understand my trauma can't stand up so big that you cannot see the God who's the God above the trauma. Because sometimes we'll exalt our disease, we'll exalt our, our hangups, we'll exalt our falling short, of the things that we have fallen short for higher than we exalt the one who has the ability to take those things away. And then we'll say, well, that's just who I am. That's just the effects of the trauma. And while I'm very compassionate, very understanding that we go do things and I will never, never try to put myself in someone else's shoes when they've gone through very hard times. I will never take that away. But there's moments that when we show up in the presence of God, we come absent of who we are. We come absent of even the very things that we know. Why? Because I'm here to pour out my worship. Even the priests in the Bible days, when they were getting ready, and they were the ones that worked in the tabernacle. When they were getting ready to go into the tabernacle, they had to strip themselves of who they were and come before the presence of God in pureness. But Jesus here gives an example of being a servant. A servant, one who he understands that his, his disciples are now trying to figure out how great I can be. They're trying to figure out the accolades, but he, Jesus is reminding them that you have a responsibility to first be a servant. We have a responsibility to be a servant. The reason why sometimes we are missing the mark is because we've become too focused on the things around us. The father, the great physician today, because even before I promote you, father, fill us with your love. Before you give me more, because the word of God said, if I'm able to speak in the tongue of angels and of men and have not love, it profits me nothing. So I can be great, but if my heart is not turned toward the service and serving God, I've already missed the mark. Jesus even told his disciples, he said, when you go in, even when you arrive, he said, when you go into a a, a, a gathering, a, a dinner, a party, don't take the high seat. Y'all, you can come in, you might be able to, because you've been following me, you, you got power. You have the ability to cast out demons, but when you show up, I don't want you to take the high seat. He said, because someone else can come in a little bit higher, now you got to be made ashamed. He doesn't want us to, even when we arrive, still be humble. Who, who was that that said that? Kendrick Lamar? He said, be humble, right? We have a responsibility to be humble. The Father wants to look and examine our hearts today. Are we still serving? And if I could add on, why are we serving? Who are we serving? Some of us have uh, uh, made ourselves into gods. Well, we serve ourselves. My needs before the needs of the church. My needs before even what God is saying. My needs before what the leader is asking me to do. Who are we serving? Do we still have the love, the same love that we once had? The scripture the psalmist wrote, he said, to serve the Lord with gladness. 
Some of us, if, if they didn't put a fire behind some of us, we wouldn't even serve. There you go. I said it. Some of us, if we didn't, if we didn't know our name was on the program, well, some of us probably wouldn't even show up, and that's the reality. But, Lord, refocus my ability to serve you. Refocus my, because, Father, I should have the ability, and even as high as uh, uh, you may take me, Father, give me the heart of a servant. Never let me think that I'm better than whomever. Because the reality is, is that this gift, I may be able to prophesy, but this gift belongs to the Lord. Young people, when we go before the Lord, always remember that your gifts came from God. And the reality is, if, if he didn't blow his breath in me this morning, I would not even have gotten up. So I'm on his time. I'm on his, I'm on borrowed time, honestly. I'm borrowing his gifts. I'm borrowing his breath. And I'm borrowing his time. And in the moment that he decides to snatch it away, who am I but dust? This belongs to God. When we show up, we show up in the presence of a king. When we come to worship, we show up in the presence of a king. Open. We open our gifts to him for him to use it how he wants to. Jesus Christ, he said, he said, I didn't come to do my own will. I came to do the will of the Father. If he didn't, if the Father didn't tell him to go and lay hands, he wouldn't even go and lay and lay hands. He had all power. Look at the, even the circumstances with Lazarus. He could have already, he could have spoke the word and Lazarus would have been good. But because he came to glorify the Father in everything that he did, he had to follow proper protocol. And if you want to be a good servant, I'm going to give you three things, and then I'm going to, as they say, take my seat, my virtual seat, over here in the corner. Y'all see it? It's right here. If we want to be a good servant, one of the things is, uh, and this is, again, it goes back to the heart, because if our heart isn't right, Okay, and I'm going to go back to that. If our heart isn't right, and let me say this, and let me speak to adults real quick. Y'all children, I'm going to, okay. It's the reason why sometimes deliverance isn't coming into fruition is because the heart of the people aren't right. And you're, so I'm not talking about the ones that need deliverance. I'm talking about the ones that are trying to administer deliverance. Because here's the reality. Because if love, if my heart is not operating right, then even the blood won't be able to flow around the body like it's supposed to. The reason why there's a loss of vision is because if something's wrong with your heart, it could have an effect on your eyes. Some, your heart can have an effect on your ears. You can't even uh, uh, speak correctly if there's something going on with your heart. I was saying it earlier, but we can't even Full, we can't fulfill and can't have the full capacity of who God is until our heart gets together. He's not dwelling where there's hate. He's not dwelling where there's jealousy. So that's why the word always admonishes us for us to go back, pull up that root. Oh, you thought you was good because of dirt and you saw a little bit of a fly. Ah, come on. Yes, God. You saw a little flower grow and so you thought you were good. No, no, no. Let's dig you back up and get that root. I still see a root. There's still some stone. Oh, oh, you think you good because you prophesy real good? That's cute. There's still some roots down there that's getting ready to cut off the fruit. There's still some roots down there that are getting ready, and our bishop's been prophesying the people that are coming. If I don't deal with what's inside of me, I'm going to kill the people that are coming. Transition our heart, Father. Come and be the, the doctor that deals with our heart today. But if you want to be a servant, first of all, you must ask the Lord, and we hear it again, don't ask the Lord to make you humble, but God, show me how to be humble. I don't need you to make me humble because that means I might have to lose some things. 
But Lord God, give me the scripture. That's why it's important for us to read the word. Because as we read the word, it's digging up those things that are not like God. Those things become identified. You want to be prophetic. You want to have a revelation. Have a revelation of yourself. That's the greatest revelation. Because I don't want to finish prophesying. I don't want to finish singing and find out that, Lord God, you mean to tell me I'm, I'm still going to go to hell? Don't go to hell. My, my, one of my professors used to say, don't go to hell uh, flying coach. If you want to go to hell, go to hell first class. But, Lord God, position our heart back. Have the ability to be humble. What does that mean? That means not only do I look, uh, you're not coming, oh, okay, and letting people step all over you. That's not what humility is. But when pride gets out the way, I can receive correction better. It won't hurt so bad when I got to receive the correction because I know that it's all working for my good. Be open. So some of us, we have to still move that pride out of the way. I was one. I ain't going to lie. Most prideful person. And sometimes the reason why we haven't got to where we're supposed to be is because we, we don't even have a heart open enough to hear instruction. And God is sending people to say, listen, I got this life raft for you. I can help you. And we can't say, nah, I'm waiting for God. Nah, I'm waiting. And God's like, no, here. I, no, you're waiting for something to drop out of the sky. And God's like, because even if it comes from a child, we ought to be open to be able to hear it. So to have the level of humility. Another thing about a servant is that the servant is not directed by everyone's voice. If we're serving God, that should be the voice that we're listening to. I'm standing in his courts. I'm standing here waiting for him to call me, waiting for him to say, Alicia, I need you to go and do. And I'm waiting and I'm ready. Now, a good servant, let me tell you this. A good servant, if you went to a restaurant and you had a server, and every time you looked at that server, they were like, will you hurry up? Oh, come on. I'm, we, we, are we tipping them? Y'all can be honest, go and talk back. We're not giving them anything, right? But a good servant will stand there and wait. And even if you call for the next person around me, I'm going to still stand there ready. When you look past me and you want to talk to the manager behind me, I'm, that's okay. It's okay that you didn't call me, but I'm going to stand here ready. I'm going to stand here ready until you call me. I'm not going to get jealous because somebody else is being used, but God, I'm going to stand here ready. I'm waiting for your voice. I'm waiting to hear your voice. I don't want to be moved because this person has something better for me. This person said I can make you a pastor. This person said that I will lift you up, but I'm going to stand here until I hear the voice of the one who hired me. Hallelujah. I'll stand here. And even if it takes a year, children, don't get discouraged because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a portion of my testimony. It's because people tried to rush me into positions that I was not ready for, and I fell flat on my face. So now my position is, is not to try to get to the front of the line. But God, if you just have me here, Lord, if I'm just responsible for tending to the streets in Trenton, New Jersey, if I'm just responsible for giving a drink of water to someone, Father, I'm going to stand here until you give me my commands. I'm not moved by every voice. I'm not moved by every voice. Then the last point of being a servant, the ability to be resilient. Because after a while, servants, we get tired too. But I'm reminded, Scripture, to say that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew your strength. Why am I renewed? I'm renewed, and this is why it's important. People of God, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about Miss Davis, and I've been putting all my business out, so I might have to make y'all pay me. Uh, 
So I keep a journal, okay? Uh, and, and one of the reasons why I keep a journal is because it helps me to be a better servant. What are you talking about, Alicia? Not only do I write down scriptures, but also if the Lord gives a prophecy, I sit and I write the prophecy down. Now, the other, uh, the other week, the Lord told me to go back and to listen to some of the prophecies that, um, that I, I've, I've heard a couple of uh, maybe years ago or a couple of months ago. And it began to tell me to go back and to read over it. And I believe at the beginning of last year, our bishop gave us those scriptures, the list of scriptures, for us to go and to reflect on. And the reason why is because those moments I'm able to regain my strength every time I read what God has already said. It gives me the tenacity to be able to, to when I, I get hit with different things, when I get tired, when I get looked over, I go back to the prophecies that he's already spoke over my life, and I'm reminded, God, you said that I would be the head and not the tail. I would be above and not beneath. I will be the lender and not the borrower. Because I'm reminded of your word. And this is why as people of God and servants, our hearts can be facing and we can learn how to chase after the heart of God. Why? Because I'm not focused on what others are doing. I'm not focused on what the mission of other people of God. I'm seeking your heart for me. I want what you have for my life. I don't want what you have for someone else. And I'm hearing this hurry up music, so I guess they want me to hurry up. I'm just teasing. I'm going to sit in my imaginary seat real quick. Oh, it's flow music. Amen. Thank God for flow music. I'll call progressive. <laughs> Amen. But God wants us to remind ourselves that we have to have the heart of God. We have a responsibility to be servants. And if you could be anything great in the kingdom, say, Lord, make me a servant. Lord, for some of us who have been, uh, I don't know why I want to use this word, but I'm going to use it, but been politicking in the kingdom when we ought to be instructors and dictators and, and speaking those things in the kingdom. Father, reposition our hearts because I don't want to miss the mark. I don't want to gain the world and lose my soul because I tried to be great and not a servant. Reposition my heart because, Father, I realize that I don't even love you the right way. Help me to be a servant. Lord God, teach me. I don't need you to make me humble, but teach me how to be humble. Lord God, where there's levels of pride that won't allow myself even, Father, some of us have been blocked from being blessed because we won't go to the altar because we have a title. But Father, even today, Father, we come boldly to the throne of grace, not worried about who's saying what and what is what and what is what. But Father, I'm coming because this is what I need. You're my Father. Father, help us, Lord God, and retrain our ears. Some of us need our ears to be retrained. We've been hearing every other voice but yours. We've got accustomed to, and I know uh, uh, back in the, during the pandemic, uh, Bishop began to say, he said, be careful about who you're listening to during the pandemic. I'm going to just say, I'm going I'm to reiterate that. Be careful who you're listening to. I know that there are some awesome preachers on the TV and on YouTube, but see, the reality is, is that we have the ability with our, our fingers and everything else, we have the ability to shut off what we don't want to hear. Some of us need to become retuned with the voice of our leader. Because some of us, God, God gave him a responsibility to watch over our souls, and some of us are so messed up because we've been listening to what my, this preacher said. Dr. Blah, blah, blah said this. Pastor da, da, da said that. 
I'm going to go with that. But God gave him a charge to listen to, uh, to listen to God for us. So, Lord God, retrain our ears to hear what it is that you have to say. I tell you all the time, man has opinion, God has instruction. Retrain our ears. Then, Lord God, give me the resilience and, Lord God, the tenacity. Help me to be able to bounce back when life doesn't go my way, when things hurt. Help me, Lord God, to be able to stand there until you have called me. Let me not get ahead of myself. And, Father, help us even to become empty today. Because the reality is, Father, some of us have become so full of ourselves And we're not even full of your spirit. We're not even full of your love. Before you give us more of your spirit, give us more of your love. Deepen that, God. But, Lord God, you dwell in unity. God, teach us, Lord God, how to behave as sheep. Lord God, and even when we have to, Lord, teach us not to put our brothers and sisters on front street, but God, how to use our wool to cover them. Because all of us, Father, are going to walk through moments of shame. Teach us how to stay there, Lord God. Lord God, for you said in your word that they will know that you are my disciples by the love that you have one for another. Help us, Lord God, to be your servants. Help us, Lord God, to, Lord, in our high place, Lord, help us, God, to come low before you, Father. Teach us not to seek your hand, but to seek your heart. Lord, help us, God, to be embraced as a father, even as you draw us to your bosom, God. Help us to be drawn to your bosom, God, and to keep our head there. God, that even as we've heard it before, that we could be in the rhythm of your heartbeat. And, God, we thank you. And even for us, God, as leaders, Lord God, I pray for our young people, God, that they will learn this lesson early. God, that they will know, Lord God, that the greatest amongst them is the least of them. It's not the one with the big name. It's not the one with the best voice. It's not the one who can speak in tongue the best, but it's the one who has the humble heart. And God, for us, Lord God, even as parents and leaders, help us, oh God, to be humble before you. Help us, oh God, to, Lord God, to come boldly to you, Lord God. And even when you're correcting us, as it says in Hebrews, Father, that, Lord, that you discipline those that you love. Help us, God, to receive your discipline. Because it'll make us for a better runner. And we don't want to die out, Father. We don't want to fail and not continue the race and not finish the race because our heart gave out. So give us your heart, Father. And help us, God, even in the back of our minds to go always to remember, God, that if our footing should fall short, we'll lead others astray. So teach us, Lord. Teach us how to do things the way that you have already taught us. And so, God, we thank you now. We praise you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray that you all were blessed by the word. And don't forget, young people, The greatest among you is the least, the one to be humble, be a servant. Never move from that. I don't care if you do become uh, a a bishop one day. I don't care if you are touring all over the world. Be humble. Be a servant. And remember, the one who gave it has the ability to take it away. And that in our minds should keep us humble. I don't have to be here. You don't have to use me, but I'm grateful that you do. I honor you, God, because you choose to use me. So, Lord, keep me humble. Let me be obedient. When I see others not doing what they're supposed to, help me to be obedient. Because, Father, at the end of the day, I want to hear you say, well done. Not my good and faithful pastor. Not my good and faithful prophet. 
not my good and faithful uh, uh, evangelist, but well done, my good and faithful servant. So we thank you now. Amen. We thank God for the message. Amen. We're going to prepare our hearts to give part of our servant, becoming a servant. Our servanthood is being able to give. We never come before the Lord empty. We're, we're empty. Here's the thing, and, and let me let me help you help you with this so that we can understand. In worship, we never. If somebody ever says, "Oh, I had a good worship, and I'm full," okay, no, the word makes us full. Worship should make us empty. We get filled up with the word, but worship makes us empty. We get filled up with the word. But worship makes us empty. It's rude if you come before a king with no gift. It's out of culture if you come before the king with no gift. So I'll be the gift. And I'm coming empty. Amen. Amen. The, the uh, information for giving is on the screen. Zell, if you'd like to give through Zell, is 302-561-7998. Or if you would like to give via Cash App, it's EC Church, EC Church. And we pray that you all will give. We pray that you all are blessed. And I pray that you all will have a prosperous wor uh, week. I'm going to say work. Well, work week. I pray that you all have a, a wonderful day and that you all will allow the word of the Lord to search you. I'm going to challenge you. Give yourself a couple hours before you hop on social media. The mothers back in the day, they used to tell us, go out to church, let the word of God marinate, because some of us will already find judgment in things. And, and I'm going to say this because there are some things and even negativity that God wants you to tell people, listen, I thank you for your complaint, but no thank you today. Thank you for your revelation of who you think I am. I'm good, though. And so I pray that you all will have a wonderful week. Continue to pray for our bishop and those that are journeying with them uh, as they're coming back from Africa on this week. Also, please keep in mind, regroup, regroup, regroup. We are ready for it. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Register. Get your hotel room. If you have to be like Jesus and get a barn out back, you want to be there for regroup. Don't get a barn out back because they will call the cops and then Bishop will get in trouble. But we want you to be there. All right. We love you and we thank God for you. You all have a wonderful afternoon.